Hi guys. Hello. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. And uh, go Eagles. I had a heart, I almost had a heart attack. Um, we were at the farm watching the game, and uh, I always think it's fun when Nancy's family uh, sees me in, in action watching um, uh, a sporting event because they they see my uh, sports my, fan. My, my sports <laughs> fan true colors come out. Um, hi, Nancy D. Hi. So, so <laughs> what we're going to talk about tonight is actually, um, this is something that Nancy heard on a podcast and she shared it with me. Actually, we, we listened to it a little bit, uh, on our drive a couple of days ago to the farm and it was on the Chris Harder, uh, podcast for the love of money. And he interviewed this, this amazing guy who was sharing, um, basically his formula for success and it can be applied to business, it can be applied to your life, uh, it can be applied to your relationships. So we wanted to share with you this basic breakdown and, and he, um, he had a specific, uh, a specific way that he came up with the formula. So we, we basically entitled tonight's Facebook Live is that everyone is looking for the answer. Well, we entitled it in this, but yeah. Well, yeah, the importance <laughs> of self-care and accountability, but everyone's looking for the answer. What's the best way to take care of myself? Like, how do I keep myself accountable? How do I succeed? So, um, Nancy, I'm, I'm going to turn it to you. Yeah, and we're definitely going to touch uh, on self-care a little bit, too, because, again, we like to talk about things that are impacting us right now, and we try to be very transparent on, you know, how what we're facing, and you know, so self-care is a big one for this week. But anyway, so everyone is looking for the answer. Um, this podcast was so incredibly impactful to me because everyone is dealing with information overload, right? There's so much knowledge. There's so much advice. There's so many gurus and people saying, oh, I can teach you how to do this and figure this out and do this. And you can literally get to the point where you are so overwhelmed with knowledge because it, it's never ending. Um, and there's so many people trying to get your attention. So this guy on this podcast, uh, again, it was for the love of money, um, create podcast, uh, by Chris Harder. And, uh, the gentleman was talking about just, you know, he was explaining to his son on the subway one day and he was trying to explain success to him. And he said, you know, it's like this subway terminal. And he was using the different letters of the terminal to explain how, success goes and you know we always talk about relationship and tonight's tips can really apply to relationships or it can also apply to uh, business hey Jeff um, so the first uh, thing um, you know secret to success or plan for success is have a vision for those of you who follow me on my personal page, I posted an Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, it was like a goal cast or like a, a, a video. And it was insanely inspiring because he said, how many of us in this world, I mean, there's so many people unhappy with their jobs, with their life, with their relationships, with where they're at, but they walk around and they're not really sure what they want. So how many of us have actually, you know, thought about like, wow, you know, my job stinks and I hate, you know, my life and things are so rough and, you know, my relationship sucks and whatever, but it's really funny to think about. And I kind of had this epiphany last month is I didn't even know what I really wanted, right? If you ask me, what do I want five years from now? What do I want my job, my career, my situation to look like? And I was kind of like, really know I mean I knew some things but like it's really crazy so it's really important to just plain sit back guys take a minute take a day off and think about what you want set a vision for yourself um, I don't care you know we're already into 2019 this could be halfway through the year if you realize you don't have a solid vision stop what you're doing and do a reset um, you need to have a vision of where you want to go and what you want to accomplish. Without that, it's going to be a lot harder, and you're going to kind of be bobbing and weaving and kind of just going with the flow of unhappiness and boredom. So anything to add there? I just wanted to say hi to you know everyone that came on. Uh, Kate, Katie, Mary, what's up? Paul, Josh Rosen, good to see you on here, brother. Marcus Thomas, go birds. Hey, hey yes. Oh, my God, great game. <laughs> yeah, um, I almost had a heart attack. Um, anyway... <laughs> You know, we, we, like everyone does like vision boards and goal boards and we actually did um, happening boards this year because 
you know, we, uh, we wanted to make sure that we had the clearest vision possible of, of what we wanted to achieve. And we actually broke it down into a couple of different categories. I'm actually going to do a Facebook live on it, but you know, having, um, what you want to happen in your life personally, professionally, um, in your relationship, you know, things that you want to continue doing, but without a vision, um, there is no success, uh, because it's the analogy that I use. Um, you know, it's like closing your eyes and throwing darts at a dartboard without looking at it. So you need to visualize the dartboard before you throw it so you can up the chances of success. And, and if you don't have a vision, if you're walking around with your eyes closed, with your heart closed, with your mind closed, you're going to literally shut down any avenue or opportunity for you to succeed. So with a clear vision, you have a clear path. And when you have a clear path, you know what direction you need to go in to make it happen. Absolutely. And, um, you know, just to tack on, I mean, it goes right with a couple other things that I've been reading about. And it's like the Arnold Schwarzenegger video said that a lot of people, what they do is they graduate school and they graduate college or high school or whatever, and they fall into jobs that they never wanted in the first place or it never was really their thing. Um, and they just continue that unhappiness and ride it out through the rest of their life. So, again, cannot stress this one <laughs> anymore, vision. you know. You get a clear vision of what you want out of your life. Um, the second one is to have an efficient and an effective plan, right? So we tie this again. We're trying to keep it on relationship, but it also goes with business. But having an efficient and effective game plan of what you want out of your relationship or out of your business or out of your life is, again, very important. I mean, I, I can... Um, talk about it in two ways, you know, personally for, for Nancy and I, you know, we did these uh, happening boards because we wanted to have an effective game plan. We, we wanted to have um, literally a, a system put in place where we were going to be taking those action steps. Okay, here's the plan. You know, and even today we were brainstorming some things about my business. All right, she goes, let's come up with a game plan. What do you want to achieve? And then you work backwards. Um, and for you know me personally in my business, you know I, I created uh, a, a side business to help entrepreneurs to do just this. Um, but I had to create, with Nancy's help, uh, an efficient and effective game plan for my business so it could be efficient and effective for those that were obviously going to be doing the business with me. But again, with any game planning, it has to be efficient. It has to be effective. Um, and that can be taken into anything, your own personal goals for yourself as a human being, um, within yourself, with your relationship, with your job. Not even if you uh, are entrepreneurs like Nancy and I, but if you work for someone else, if you have a regular job, you, can, you should still have an efficient and effective game plan put in place to be the most productive person you can be for that company. You don't want to just go in there and just cruise in there. You actually want to be your best, outperform, and and blow past any expectation of what they thought you were going to do. Yeah, absolutely. 100% agree. Um, the third is belief system. So again, you got your vision, you got your plan, um, but you've got to have a solid belief system, right? You know, how many times have we told ourselves we're not good enough? Or what will people think if I do this? You know, if you were to talk to me a couple years ago, would I ever jump here on a Facebook Live and share this kind of stuff and be this vulnerable? No, I probably wouldn't. Um, but, you know, stop limiting yourself. You know, have a strong mindset. Um, a lot of people talk about doing something like a daily mantra or something when they wake up. Like, guess what? It's going to be a good day. I'm going to be the best possible. I am worth it. I am great. I am wonderful. I am capable of great things, you know? Um, we just started one that uh, Chris, and, Chris Harder and Lori Harder do, which is um, each day you wake up and you say, you know, I'm healthier, wealthier, wiser. Uh, you know, than I was the day before, and I'm probably leaving one out. But anyway, it's just know that you are good enough. You know, there's a million people out there, and no matter what people look like on the internet, you know, everyone's going through their own struggle. You know, life is not always easy. Life is rarely easy. Um, and no matter what people look like on the surface or on the outside, you know, everyone's going through their own stuff, and don't ever think that you're alone. Um, but never, please never fall in that mindset that you don't deserve all good things and that you can't get over any kind of hump that you're facing um, and through anything that's really hard because 
it's part of life. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to just say something simple. When you believe, you achieve. And that's the same thing. If you have a belief system in place, you can achieve anything you want. Absolutely. Um, so the next one. So after belief system, you have to make the decision. Okay? And we break this down into separate steps because it seems like it could be, you know, a lot simpler. But you've got to make the decision, right? In your relationship, in your business, I'm going to do better. I'm going to be better, right? If you decide that something isn't working, you know, you've already you know, had the vision, all right, I want to be a better husband, I want to be a better spouse, I want to be a better, you know, uh, girlfriend or boyfriend, um, and you decide, all right, you know, here's the game plan, we're going to have a date night once a week, um, we're going to read a book together, you know, you've got that belief system, right, I'm, a, I'm good enough, and, and we are good together, and, and everything is good, you've got to make the decision to commit to it, okay, um, and Decision in the next one, which is commitment, you'll see it's a little bit separate, right? Because we have to make that decision in our mind, and we've got to confirm that, okay, right? This relationship I want to be in, <laughs> right? This relationship is going to work, and I want to make it work. And there's no more balancing on that, that you know, tra trapeze wire where you're leaning forward, and you're like, ooh, I'm going to go all in and be all about this relationship, and I'm going to give it all I got, and I'm going to be all about this business, and I'm going to give it all I got. Or I'm going to fall backwards because I don't think this is the right one. You've got to make that decision and to decide what you want to do. With, without making decisions, and I just want to say hi to, to Kayla, Dave, Lisa, Jen, Andrea, and a whole bunch of people popped on here. Um, in anything that you do, in your relationship with yourself, with your spouse, your significant other, uh, in a business, if you do not decide, you have no opportunity of succeeding. Because all life comes down to is making decisions. You know, how I, I, I saw a great post by um, Jay Shetty today, um, and he said something along the lines of um, he goes, if, if you're this person, if you're reading this and you're the person that let go of a negative, um, unfulfilling, uh, uh, you know, uh, toxic relationship with a friend or uh, someone that you were in, involved with, congratulations, you won. Um, because a lot of us, we, we, we settle in, in whatever we want. And, you know, Nancy and I, obviously, we never felt like that we settled in our previous relationships. They, they just didn't work with the person that we were with, and it was like nothing against that person. But, you know, we, we are of the opinion that, you know, Two people either work or they don't, um, but sometimes we stay in relationships longer than we should because we haven't come to that decision to obviously decide what do I actually want? Uh, because you know we, we get the chatter in our head, and but the fact of the matter is, no matter what you need to do, you have to decide. If you can't decide, it, it can't lead to commitment because commitment stems from deciding that you're going to do something. You know, um, Kayla, who's on here, she now competes competitively in CrossFit. And she, need, she needed to make a decision from just working out to I need to decide that I am going to become a CrossFit athlete. And once you decide that you're going to do that, she had to then commit to that decision. So uh, number five is commitment. And I guess I'll, I'll go into this and yep. I'll let you finish. Is that once you decide – you must commit. You know, how many people, I mean, we're talking about resolutions right now. How many people decide this is going to be the year that I'm going to lose all the weight and, and, and then you say it, but committing is a whole other thing. Committing to it would then be the next day after deciding that you're going to lose weight, you're going to go to a gym and you're going to get a gym membership and you're going to hire a personal trainer because without accountability, you're setting yourself up for failure. Because this is something that, that Nancy and I talk about. You know, she's a part of an accountability group. Um, I've created an accountability group, but I've also recently joined an accountability group because you need people that you don't have a close personal relationship with to hold you accountable. Because if you and like one of your buddies, you know, <laughs> you know, like if Nancy and I were accountability partners, we would not get shit done. 
we wouldn't because we'd be like, uh, yeah, you want it? You want some eggs? You, want <laughs> you, you, you end up like just being buddy buddy, and that's not how it works. So if you are going to decide that you're going to do something, if you're going to decide I'm going to have the best relationship ever with my partner, I decide I'm going to be the healthiest person I can be, I'm going to make a lot of money this year, I'm going to commit to running my business, whatever it is, the right way. You have to commit to that decision and do whatever it takes to make it happen. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. And everything that I've been reading lately, it is all funneled back to accountability. You know, I don't care who you are, right? Um, you know, every single person from coaches themselves to business owners Lori's to entrepreneurs. Asking, where, where do you find these people? Oh, like I was joking with Scott. I was like, I, I used to coach people for years. I feel like I'm going to open up shop. But like, Everybody needs someone to hold them accountable. Um, and actually, the podcast I was listening to, the guy used to do it, but he used to charge people like ninety-five bucks a week or, or a, month. a month. Oh, yeah, a month to actually like get on the phone with them and say, "What are your four goals for this month? You know, what do you want to accomplish?" And he would follow up with them each week, and he would be mad as hell if they didn't complete their goal. He'd be like, "Why didn't you get that done? I told you to do three things." I'm not going to, you know, I'll call you tomorrow. That's it. But basically just to keep you on track. Okay. Be, and especially, man, it's hard as an entrepreneur to really stay accountable sometimes. Well, we were yourself. talking about like, we were talking about coaches and I was speaking to her about some, some uh, coaching that I did with other people. Mm -hmm. And she's like, well, how would it go? And I said, well, I would have the call and that's it. And, and you were like, no, no assignment, no accountability. So um, I made it a point when I started doing, personal mentoring and coaching that every week I would give the person a homework assignment. And it may just be doing a vision board that week or write out five things that you want to create or 10 things that are holding you back. That small action step that you tell someone. So if, if you're paying someone to coach you and they say, listen, Nancy, your, your job this next week after we get off the phone, I want you to come up with a blueprint for a business that you would like to start. And then you're going to have it for us next week, and then we're going to go over it. But guess what? Guess how impactful that is for your business. And guess how many of us get all jazzed up on like a Sunday, and we're like, yes, I'm going to go start my own this business or my own coaching bit, and I'm going to do all these things, which is all possible, by the way. Right. Right? You decide, you want, oh, I want to do all this. But actually putting your head you know, down and doing it is the hardest thing. In fact, Right? There's so much knowledge out there. You could read all day long. In fact, you could spend the entire day and learn soup to nuts how to run Facebook ads. But without say, accountability. Right? But without accountability and actually someone saying, all right, set me up a business plan. What's that going to look like? I want you to put together your business, your structure, your whatever. Without that, it's just going to sail off into the wind. We're going to keep searching for something else. But guess what, guys? There's always going to be more and more and more and more knowledge out there. Now, I keep trying to bring this back to relationship because that's what we talk about right on Sundays. There's always going to be relationship advice. Yeah. There's always going to be tips out there. There's A always book. someone saying, oh, you got to try this and you got to do that. And it's, it's almost like I say parenting, right? There's all these techniques and methods and, you know, like all these different things. But guess what? There's going to be a time when you're going to have to clear out the noise and you're going to have to just have a vision, right? What do you want your relationship to be? You're going to have to think of a plan of what you're going to do. You're going to have to get it in your mind that this is what you're going to you know, commit to. Make that decision that this relationship is working and I want to make it work and you've got to make that commitment, okay? <laughs> I can compare, you know, if there's issues in a relationship, you go and you hire a therapist. You pay money. You go to an impartial party that's going to give you advice, but also things to work on in the relationship. Yeah, I agree. And with that. and you're, so there's 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 all forms of coaching, but if you don't make the investment in yourself, in an accountability partner or a coach or a mentor or a therapist, whether it's for you personally, for your life, or your business, or your relationship. That, that's when the magic happens, when you actually invest in yourself and you have someone, okay, Nancy, here's what you need to do this next week because the best feeling that any individual person can have, whether it's in their personal relationship or business life, is feeling like they're in action, that they're working 
on something or working towards something. And, you know, it's, I, I compare it to when you're in school, when you get your homework done, um, you know, it just feels so good to get your homework done and you go to school, you're all prepared, you're like, here's my assignment. And, but again, to, to, but that's how you learn. You know, that's why teachers give people homework because we're going to go over, you know, when Columbus sailed, you know, the seven seas and discovered America, and then you're going to have a little exam or a test on it, and they're going to give you an assignment. I want you to learn this, and this is what the test is going to be on. So it reinforces gaining knowledge. So if you want to make a decision to make yourself, your relationship, your life better, there's going to be homework assignments that need to be done for you to learn more about yourself so you can make those things better. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> so after you commit, number six, you have to take massive, massive action. action. And what's up, Michael? Good to see you on here. Branch, my brother, good to see you. Massive action. So, Nancy, go. All right. So, massive action just keeps on going, right? We're going for it on this train and whatever. And, you know, you've got your commitment. You hopefully at this point, you know, we talked about having an accountability partner. Um, mine, actually, for anyone out there who is an entrepreneur, I joined a women's entrepreneurship group. And they actually assign each other an accountability partner. So, I haven't experienced this yet. I'm super stinking excited because I know that I need someone <laughs> to tell me what to do sometimes and I need to set, you know, those goals for myself. But the massive action is actually, all right, now we're putting the car in gear and now we're driving forward. Um, and I think it's just plain and simple. Massive action. Taking action. Is, yeah, action. It, it's everything. Uh, everyone keeps saying, like, if you don't take action with what you learn, so you can read every book, you can listen to every podcast, you can hire every coach, but if you don't take action on those things that you're learning, nothing in your life is ever going to change. It's just plain and simple. So if you're gonna decide to commit, you have to take action on those commitments. Absolutely. And then the last one, which is the most important one of all, it's going to take time. All right. I how many of I, I us, I know, how many of us get all excited and we're like, we're going to go do this. We're going to, you know, do this. We're going to change the world. We're going to be okay in a relationship. We're going to have this amazing relationship. Everything's going to be perfect and we're going to fix it and we're not going to fight anymore and all that stuff. And then how many times do we start to get impatient? at the first little hiccup, at the first sign of something, you know, not being perfect. How did that happen? I don't know. Um, sure. It's like squirrel, right? You know, something. Sorry, I just looked at my phone and Mickey Mouse just appeared. And I'm like, <laughs> how did that happen? Um, so like time though, right? Like we get impatient, we want things to happen so immediately, and we get squirrel brain, and we don't see it through. Um, the they compare it to, okay, let's say we're on the airplane, we fly, we land, okay, we've done all these things, we put the vision in place, we know where we want to go, we set the destination, we, you know, we do all this stuff, and then we get to the baggage claim, right? We're not at our destination yet, and we get stuck, and we miss our flight, we don't get to our destination, we're not there yet. Everything's going to take time, okay? It's going to take time. You got to have patience. You got to not have squirrel brain. Okay? You've not you can't just give up at the first sign of frustration. And I want to walk through this whole thing again in the life of a relationship um, because again, you have to think about this and you got to break it down entirely and it might be kind of a fun exercise for you and your couple, you know, your partner to do. Um, you know, and if you're single, maybe to plan out, you know, what you want your relationship to look at. Like, but again, first in your relationship, you've got to have a vision of what you want, right? What do you want your relationship to look like? You're two separate people, right? Your relationship is going to look different than your friend, than your, you know, relative, than your whatever. Maybe you both love hiking. Maybe you don't like hiking. Maybe this person likes hiking, but what is your vision of a healthy relationship? What does that look like? Okay. What is going to be your effective plan? What's your game plan to make things better? Okay. No one's relationship is perfect. Get a game plan together. The next one is belief system, 
Stop thinking you're not good enough. Stop having those doubting beliefs. You know, what will people think if we break up or if something happens? Like, get yourself in the right mindset. Um, make the decision. I'm going to be better. Do you know a lot of people, it's really hard for them to realize that the problem might be them. Okay? Think about how many relationships you've seen and how many people might be frustrated or come to you and say, I just can't stand it when he or she is like this. Well, you hear it all the you time know? that like sometimes people just can't get out of their own way. Yes. And sometimes you, you're, you're the roadblock. You are the reason that things are stuck. And if you just get out of your own way, get out of your head, get into <laughs> your heart and move forward and decide, that's when... That's when commitment happens, right? So then you realize maybe it's you, right? You make that decision to be better, commit to it, okay? Follow through. Massive action, okay? It's not just going to be like, a, oh, well, now we're going to do a date night, you know, once a month or something, haha, -ha, and then you just fall off. No, it needs to be massive action. You, you hire a therapist. You figure out exactly what the problem is. You, you go every week until you fix it. You, yes. And you work on the relationship together yes and we put so much time and energy into business stuff and this and that why wouldn't you want to do that for your relationship and then again finally patience and time um, anytime you know something needs to be addressed and sometimes things need to be worked on it is not a simple I'm sorry it's okay we're good now we're all right we're good. no it, it is something that is going to progressively take time and the one thing that I in my just you know I'm, I'm a very impatient person because like when I see something and I visualize something and I want it I want it now and I, I think and, <laughs> and and it's just it's just the way that life is so I've gotten better at you know really just being patient but just understand that in anything that you truly want or desire in your life in your relationship uh, it's gonna take time it's not gonna happen overnight everyone sees the glory but no one knows the story you see all these um, we were listening to this gold cast about Kevin Hart and he said, you know, the interesting thing is like everyone's like, oh my God, you know, he's so huge and he's hitting it big and you know, he's everywhere and he's making all this money oh, and, so easy. and he just, he just rose right to the top and he goes, he goes, what people don't know, they didn't talk about me until about three, three, four years ago, but I was on a circuit for 16 years ever since I was 17, 16 years, no one knew who I was. But only people talk about the last six or seven years, but they don't talk about the first 16. So again, you see where somebody is right now, you don't know the price that they've paid to get to where they are. Because they've put in the hours, they've put in the, they put in the time, the energy, the ups, the downs, the tears, the laughs, all of those things to get to where they are. And that's exactly how some relationships are. Sometimes you have to get in it and work on it to really have it be the most magical relationship ever. And I really attribute our relationship to that. We we don't hold anything back. We're always talking. We're always figuring things out. Absolutely. Everything, as Nancy said, is figureoutable. It's figureoutable. Um, and then we just wanted to close on just you know the importance of self care. So <laughs> right before we um, you know got on our live, I kind of had like a little break, and I'm like, you know what? I need to be better with self care. Period. Um, you know, it's, it's an important thing for me. And my sister was actually asking me tonight and she's like, you know, what do you do in your downtime? And I'm just thinking in my head, I'm like, what downtime? You know, you said it too. You're like, well, you know, and, I'm, I'm, and it's just like, I mean, I just to be very transparent with you guys. Um, you know, I am working on building, um, you know, my businesses, my things, you know, my real estate business is catch line stage, you know, like it's baby stages. My, you know, my cleaning business right now is, you know, it's where it's at right now, continuing to work on growing. And then um, I'm working on a marketing project that I'm extremely excited about. But again, it's in budding stages. So everything's challenging. It's mentally tapping. It's very hard. And there's a lot of information. Um, and again, this really applied to me because there's so much knowledge out there and it's hard to just press go, right, when you're just consuming all this knowledge. So when it comes down to self-care, all through Christmas, all through New Year's, we were up working. Midnight. You know, we were up till really late every single night working. Christmas Eve we worked. Christmas Day we worked. New Year's Eve, Eve we worked. New Year's Day. We have been working 
nonstop on our businesses and just going, going, going. And, you know, I realized that that's important, right, to work hard and to hustle and to, you know, do your thing. But self-care is ridiculously important, and it's okay to give yourself permission to take a little time just to recalibrate, right? And we kind of had this conversation right before the live because I realized I keep cyclically hitting this wall where I get frustrated or I lose focus and I lose my motivation. You need to give yourself a little bit of a break sometimes and you need to let your mind kind of reset. So just putting it out there, guys, when you do hit that wall and you need to focus on self-care, give yourself permission to do so. Limit it, you know, don't take like a month off, but I mean, unless you absolutely need it. But, you know, give yourself permission to take that break that you need, um, recalibrate your brain, give yourself a big hug, um, you know, and keep going at it because you guys are awesome. You know, everyone's capable of great things. It's just really setting that vision of what you truly want, taking massive action, all the things we talked about, um, you know, in this video. Uh, it's all good stuff. And I'm really yeah. bad at, um, <laughs> I'm really bad at taking off time. Just because I, I, it's a fear of mine that if like I take time off that I'm going to miss an opportunity, and uh, you know I had a very very challenging week last week. It was probably one of the most challenging weeks I've had in, in over a year, and I couldn't figure out why because I wasn't doing anything out of the ordinary or different from what I did before. But like Nancy didn't even know how to console me. <laughs> I was or, like. Do do you want me to hug you? Like, I don't know. Like, I'm not sure. <laughs> and she even said, she goes, listen, if, if you just need to be by yourself this weekend and not come to the farm and just clear your head, like, just say the word. And I'm like, no, like, I need to go. You know, I want to be around your family. I want to I go to the farm. And it was honestly the best decision I made because. It was like was, a spa vacation. Yeah, like, I mean, it was, like it was so mentally, you know, we were like, hanging at the huh. farm and, you know, we were, you know. I started crocheting again. <laughs> Yeah, but, I mean, but it was, you know, like, like today, you know, we, we slept in until nine, we had leftovers for breakfast, you know, we went out and got coffee and then we started the fire and literally I sat by a fireplace for about 12 hours today. Watch um, the Eagles watched game. Watch the Eagles game and, you know, last night we stayed up until one o'clock in the morning playing categories and um, Pictionary. Um, yeah, a Pictionary and Cards Against Humanity and drinking wine and just laughing, like belly laughs and it was just, it was so needed. Like I wasn't thinking about work. I wasn't thinking about my businesses. I was just, I was so present um, with where I was with, you know, my family and, and, you know, like our niece and our, our, our nephews and just, it was just so much fun uh, just really spending time. And, um, and, you know, we were driving back and like, man, I really fucking needed that like <laughs> like I feel so much better now like I, I realized that last week wasn't as bad as I thought it was I was I was bringing value to uh, where I was devaluing my week because of an expectation that I had um, but you know taking care of yourself and you know just having a day you know I was in I, I told Nancy I didn't wear underpants at all today I literally <laughs> No, now I am. I was in. I just wore sweatpants all day. Oh my god! I was just. I was wearing. I was wearing a t-shirt and sweatpants all day. I didn't know. Um, like, and it was just. I can't. It was just. It was so nice because I. I haven't. I can't remember the last time I stayed in my PJs all day. Like, I mean, if we're sick, obviously we're wearing our PJs all day. But this was. I, this. I felt great. We were just in our pajamas all day, and it was awesome. Yeah. And it's just so needed. So like whether it's once a week or once a month, everyone needs that reset day where you can just wake up and just stay in bed, like not have to go anywhere. And I think that's something we should totally do and yeah. just watch movies or YouTube and read books and just important to me. crochet yeah. or whatever it is. So, so guys, listen, you know, go back, leave your comments below. Um, happy Sunday. Go Eagles. We got a tough, tough matchup next week against – the New Orleans Saints, but um, we believe in Saint Nick, and and uh, that we're gonna, we're going to do it again, and we're going to make another run because we are the underdog. So we love you so much. Enjoy the rest of your Sundays, and we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Good night.